Okay, so in this video, we will be looking at the bevel operation, and we'll be looking at a few ways that we can apply bevels to a model, and also how we can apply smoothing to our given object. So for this, we're just going to start with a basic cube. So Shift and A to create a mesh, and we'll get our cube. Now, a couple of ways that we can apply bevels. The first one is if we go into edit mode, so tab to enter edit mode, we have our bevel operation tool over here. So if we click this, nothing's gonna happen. We'll need to click into the scene again, uh, making sure that the object is selected, highlighted, as mine was, uh, you can see it was orange. If it doesn't automatically select the entire object for you, just press A to grab everything uh, and then follow along with the step. So what we're doing is we're just clicking and dragging to add a bevel to every different edge which is selected, which at the moment is every edge. Okay, so here we have a nice clean bevel and that was very simple. Quicker way to do this is just to use the shortcut, which is Control and B. And again, you'll get the same option. This time you don't need to click, it's automatically gonna go into bevel mode. So you just need to drag the mouse cursor around to change the scaling of this. Now, another option you might want to do is if we double tap A to remove all of the selection, so to deselect everything. Uh, I'm in face mode, which you can access either up here. You have vertex mode, edge mode, and face mode. Alternatively, the shortcuts are one, two, and three to go between those. So press three to go into face mode. And this is gonna give me all of the edges around this face. So if I now press Control and B to bevel, I'm just gonna bevel the edges that I have selected based on that face. Now, if we go into edge mode, which is two, I can also just grab this single edge, press Control and B, and we can bevel it this way. Okay, so these are how we can apply some simple bevels. Now, if we press Control and B on the top face, I'm gonna make a very basic kind of hut or something. So I want to round this off with more bevels. And the way that I'm doing this is I'm just rolling the mouse wheel up or down to add or remove new edge loops essentially. So this is gonna be fine. This is gonna be round enough for my hut. And we can see down here, uh, once we have clicked to confirm our action, we get a small box appear at the bottom left of the screen. If we open this, this is actually gonna allow us, if we don't quite like the way this turned out, we can make some minor adjustments here. So the width that I've chosen, which was very much kind of uh, like freeform, so we can round this up if you wanted to 0.7 for the width of the bevel, uh, or we can completely change this by sliding it. Uh, so this is useful because obviously it means that we're not completely tied in to the modifications that we made with the operation uh, whilst using this freeform. You also get different options like changing the bevel to be based on the width or the depth. Generally, this starts by default in offset, but of course you can play about with these and see the different uh, results that you get. And then the other important thing is we have these segments. So like I mentioned, I was adding segments by rolling the mouse wheel up and down, but you can change that here as well. So you can add a lot more segments or remove some if you've added too many. So again, you get a second chance to make any alterations that you need with that bevel modifier. So that is actually pretty much fine. That's what I wanted, a kind of rounded roof for this house. And now when you're in this mode, it's kind of hard to tell that that's not looking completely smooth. As soon as you tab into object mode, uh, you can see here that we've got these ridges. It's not very smooth and we're gonna to want to fix that next. So the way that we're gonna do this is in the object mode, we're gonna press space. And that is my shortcut for the search menu. If you haven't changed yours, then you can find out what your search option is by going to edit preferences. Uh, and we can see here that you have your key mapping and you can see what your search option has been set to by searching for it here, but mine is set to the, the space bar action. So with the search menu up, I'm going to just search for the shade smooth operation and we're gonna add the shade smooth to the object. Now this has given us immediately some pretty horrible faces here. Um, it has smoothed off the, the rooftop, which is what we wanted, but this is why I wanted to make a point of this, is that once you've done something like added a bevel, completely changed the geometry and the adjoining faces and things on an object like this, you're gonna be met with some pretty weird looking shading once you shade this smooth. So what we want to do to fix this, if you don't already have it open, is come down to this panel here, and go to normals. Under normals, we can auto smooth this. And this is just gonna fix up the normal alignment based on the angle of the faces. Most of the time, this will just kind of fix itself and you can leave it at the standard 30. If you still have some weird kind of artifacting going on, then you can drag this and you can change things based on the, uh, the shape of the model that you're working with. But generally that kind of fixes things up. And we can test this by looking in uh, the look dev option as well. So I'm just, toggling between the view modes by holding down Z, because again, I've got my Pi menu on, and going between solid and the look dev option here. So again, that looks pretty much fine. 
um, and we have our bevel applied. Now the final way that I wanted to show the way that we've been doing this, whether we use this option or the shortcut, this is classed as destructive modeling. Basically because once you've done this, unless you completely destroy your progress by pressing control Z and going back, you really cannot get rid of the changes that you've just made. So that's destructive modeling. Now generally we'll do this quite a lot. There's nothing wrong with it, but some circumstances you may, for instance, say you have two versions of a model that you want, a low poly model, which, uh, which will not have the extra beveling and a high poly model, which is gonna have all of the edges beveled to give it some kind of rounder, smoother look to bake in normal maps or something. You may not want to use destructive modeling on the low poly model. You may not want to make a copy of that just to have those changes made, for example. So we can do something which is uh, to use the modifiers. So if we go over to the right hand panel, this little uh, spanner here under the context menu again is the modifiers option that we need. And we can add a modifier to our cube. The modifier that we want is of course gonna be our bevel. And if we start playing around with some of this, we can start adding a bevel to the all of the edges. So at the moment we're in our edit mode. This is gonna be a little bit easier to see if we go back over to object mode. And if we start applying the bevel, we can see that this is beveling along all of the edges using the modifier. And we get the same options. We can change the width of the bevel and we can change the number of segments and things. So like I said, we can make this very, very smooth around the edges. Um, but the great thing is, is that if we can export this one version with the modifier selected, I'm gonna go back into solid view so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, so we can export this with the modifier selected. So one of the options we have down here, if we go to the geometry tab, we have the option to apply modifiers. Alternatively then, if we didn't want this, we can either remove the modifier or disable it, or again, just uh, not use the modifiers when you're exporting it. And that way, uh, you pretty much, if you go back to edit mode, this is still going to give us an idea of what this looks like without the modifiers on. It's not actually adding all of that other geometry into the mesh data. Uh, and again, like I said, this is gonna be very useful because there's gonna be a stage when you're modeling where you cannot just control Z back. So you may have made a bevel quite early on in the process. Uh, you may have then gone and added a lot of extrusions and built the, the object out almost to its final stage. So you can't just go back and pick the bevel to be the thing that you remove. You'd have to remove all of the other progress you make. Whereas of course, with the non-destructive option, once you're done with this version of the object, uh, the beveled version, we can just remove this modifier and it's back to exactly how it was before. Now the very final thing before we wrap up is I'm gonna create a clean cube. And I just wanted to share a few things kind of building upon what we did last video with the transform and the pivot point differences and also editing things between uh, object mode and edit mode and how they can be affected. Uh, I'm gonna create a standard cube and I'm going to, in object mode, scale this out on the Z and maybe the Y a little bit. I'm going to put this to the side and then create another cube and I'm gonna do the same sort of changes but in edit mode rather than object mode. So very quick, dirty changes, nothing needs to be precise here. So the first thing is we're gonna keep all of the edges selected in edit mode and I'm gonna control B to create a bevel and I'm gonna send this back down to just one uh, segment for our bevel. So the thing I want to take note of here is that all of the edges are uniform. So all of the bevels have the same dimension uh, from point to point. Now, if we move over to our object that we edited in object mode, if we go to the item information, the first thing to note is that the scale has been changed from one, one, one to the specific sizes that we've scaled them to when in object mode. Whereas if we look at the one that we've altered in edit mode, we can see that the scale is still a uniform one, which is kind of what we want uh, when we're adding things like modifiers, uh, bevels and things like that. So if we look back at this cube, if we see what happens when we add a bevel now, so I'm gonna go into edit mode, add our bevel, um, and again, I've kept the segments at one, I've not changed anything, but we can see we get some really weird kind of uh, results coming out from different angles here. So the axes where I've added a bigger scale, this is taken into account when you're doing things like beveling. So we're getting a bigger edge on the faces here in comparison to the ones on the side. Now, this kind of result obviously isn't something that you'd normally want. If we imagine this as being something like a, a desk, which is being modeled or a worktop or something, generally when you get a table which has been chamfered around the edge the the person making it will have used this, the same size of chamfering bit to 
route off all of the edges. So you're going to get something more like this with a uniform chamfer, which of course is not what you're getting when we've edited something in object mode. If you've already done the editing in object mode and you obviously don't want to redo everything, there's a way that we can fix this, uh, the scaling option. We're going to press Control and A on the object that we have altered here in object mode. I'm going to reset the scale. Uh, you can reset all transforms if you wanted, but we just want to do the scale for now. And we can see this is going to re revert this back to one, one, and one. And then if we go back into edit mode one more time, press Control and P, we now get exactly the same bevel uh, with the nice uniform edges as we had in the object that we did in object mode. So I've just made a point of this because again, when we start creating our game ready assets, uh, this is the kind of thing that I'll be doing a lot of the alterations and modeling in edit mode. And this is just to kind of curb questions and things of what's the difference, why are you doing it this way? And generally, unless you have a reason that you know that you're editing things in object mode, it's just going to be safer to default to making your alterations in edit mode to begin with. I also wanted to show that it's not going to be the, the end of the project. If you did start doing things in object mode, we do have things where we can fix this, uh, revert the scale and things back, and we still get nice clean modifiers and operations that we can apply to our object. So I'm going to leave that video there. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.